also received word that heavily armed men had tried to mount roadblocks along sections of Brunswick Avenue shortly after 8 this morning. The free flow of traffic was impeded here along Brunswick Avenue for almost an hour this morning after heavily armed men closed both sides of this railway crossing gate, preventing traffic from flowing freely on either side. As the joint police military team stopped to carry out spot checks, gunshots rang out. Soon the ground commander issued the clear. The police then started a more extensive search of both pedestrians and motorists traveling along Brunswick Avenue. Some residents did not take kindly to the presence of the members of the security forces. The officers would not have any of it. Meanwhile, police personnel who had gone to another section of Spanish Town called Demshire Pen came under fire from gunmen for a second time. Police personnel were also attacked in Demshire Pen last night. Gunmen pinned a patrol team in the area for more than an hour under heavy and sustained gunfire. The gunmen were later forced to retreat after additional officers came to provide backup. No member of the security forces was hurt in either incident. Reports also surfaced that efforts were being made to block the flat bridge in Bogwalk. It's understood that the police came under fire from gunmen when they tried to remove the blockages. The lawmen, however, managed to foil that effort. There were also unconfirmed reports of gunfire in other parts of St. Catherine. Latoya Spence, TVJ News. And at least two of the policemen who lost their lives in the two-day offensive did so last night. They were among eight policemen shot on Mountain View Avenue. The constable and sergeant died at the university hospital this morning. Kirk Wright was on the streets of the corporate area as the violence escalated last night. The six policemen were shot in the vicinity of the Excelsior High School near Deanery Road in the Mountain View area. Police vehicles with the injured cops began streaming into the university hospital about five minutes after word came that they had been ambushed by gunmen about two this morning. This police was one of the six. He was shot in the right leg. Moments later, a sergeant was taken to the hospital. Luckily, the gunman's bullet only grazed his forehead. Then came the police rescue units with the most critical cases, a badly injured sergeant and a constable. Knowing that every moment counts, the hospital staff moved quickly to get the injured police officers into the operating theatre while their colleagues waited outside for positive news. They would be disappointed. Doctors were not able to save the sergeant News that would infuriate Police Federation Chairman Raymond Wilson, who said the fallen officer was his close friend. The badly injured constable also died hours later, despite the police braving it to the blood bank along Slipen Road. I've spoken to the, some of the commanders and I'm saying to the police force in general not to be disheartened by this. Um, continue to do your job to protect Jamaica. Um, be of strong heart. We are going to hunt them down as they ought to be hunted down and bring the full brunt of the law on them. Meanwhile, about an hour later, a distress call on the police radio said the crossroads police had come under attack from heavily armed men. The police said about 10 heavily armed men on foot walked from the direction of the crossroads post office, walked down this very road heading towards the police station to launch an outright attack. But luckily, the police say they spotted them before they could get anywhere near the station and then they defended themselves. The police showed us the bullet holes. Additional police personnel arrived not long after to provide backup. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. Police Commissioner Will Ellington has extended condolences to the family, friends and colleagues of the two police officers who were killed. In a statement today, Commissioner Ellington advised members of the police force to take swift and decisive action to protect themselves in the face of orchestrated attacks against police personnel and facilities by gunmen supporting Christopher Koch. He said police personnel have the full backing of the High Command to any response used to protect themselves, their colleagues and law-abiding citizens of Jamaica. 
There are conflicting reports this evening about a meeting between U.S. authorities and the lead attorney for Tivoli Garden strongman, Christopher Dudus Koch. The attorney at law, Don Foote, is insisting he was invited to a meeting and saying discussions have even started. But the embassy is saying, what meeting? Nadine McLeod reports. Attorneys for the Tivoli Garden strongman had said they were scheduled to hold a high-level meeting with the United States officials this morning at their embassy in Ligony, St. Andrew. Lead attorney Don Foote had said the meeting was scheduled for 10 o'clock, but there was certainly no sign of Mr. Foote when our news team went to the U.S. Embassy today. Later, the attorney confirmed by telephone that the meeting he said was scheduled had been cancelled. However, Mr. Foote said another meeting had taken place last night, but he didn't attend. In light of this, this emergency and so on, and so what is happening now, the change in circumstances, uh, it was requested that I try to attend last night. I could not because I'm in Wishbullen. Indeed, I'm in Darlistan right now. But Mr. Bezik attended. And, um, and as a result of that, the meeting, the o'clock meeting uh, was called off. But quite in contrast, the U.S. Embassy denies any knowledge of any meeting, and an official told our news center today that they do not know of any planned for the near future. And I can confirm that no meeting um, has taken place at the U.S. Embassy with Mr. Foote um, or other representatives, other legal representatives. Um, can't speak to the, the future, but I'm not aware of any. Uh, such meeting to be taking place in the immediate future. But Mr. Foote said the U.S. Embassy called him on Saturday to schedule the meeting for today to discuss the extradition affair. The reports of the meeting had fueled speculation that his client, Dudus, would like to work out a deal with the U.S. authorities. However, Mr. Foote would not say whether his client was interested in a deal. Nadine McLeod, TVJ News. And the United States government is monitoring the unrest in sections of Jamaica. Deputy Secretary of State in charge of Cuban and Caribbean affairs, Julie, Julie, Julissa Reynosa, addressed the situation in an interview with the BBC today. We're concerned about the situation. We're obviously monitoring it very, monitoring the situation very closely, and we're working to assure that uh, that uh, the situation doesn't doesn't deteriorate. We have, a, as you know, a very good relationship with the Jamaican government, and we have worked closely uh, over the last several months to ensure that this, the request for uh, the extradition request is properly handled and the Jamaican government has, has collaborated in that regard. And we, we want to make sure that the safety and security of Jamaican citizens and our citizens are a major part of this, this process. Ms. Reynoso also responded to criticism that Washington is only concerned about extraditing Christopher Koch and not about the lasting effects the situation might have on Jamaica. Well, we believe that any form of... of uh, of security measure, uh, if it concerns uh, a person that is uh, alleged to have had such a impact on Jamaican society, and, and, and if it concerns the safety of Jamaican.